Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today I will show you everything there is to know about Barrows. I usually keep all of my guides as short and as to the point as possible, but I'm gonna make an exception for Barrows just because it is so precious to me. Everyone has those pieces of content that are so iconic to them and just synonymous to the whole RuneScape experience. Whether it's killing goblins in Lumbridge, going hard in Castle Wars or getting your first fire cape, for me it was Barrows. So I'm gonna show you everything, and I mean everything, I can tell you about Barrows. I've already made a separate video going into the lore behind Barrows, so if you want to check that out, there will be a link in the top right of your screen right now. Starting off with how to get there. With the Archaea spellbook you can cast a Barrows teleport, which will put you right there. To use the teleport spell you'll need to have at least 60% Archaea's house favor. The Barrows teleport also comes in tablet form, which you can simply buy off the GE. You won't need the favor if you're gonna use the tablets. And the tablets only come out to cost about 1k more than using runes, so really not a big deal. But if you want to save some money, you can get that Archaeus favor and use runes. You could also use the Barrow's Teleport in someone else's POH if you want, so you can use their ornate pool to restore your prayer, hit points and run energy every trip. If you don't have access to Barrow's Teleports because you're an Iron Man or for whatever reason, you can also get there quite quickly by teleporting to Burg the Rot with a Mauritania Legs Tree, which is a reward for completing the Mauritania Hard Diaries. If you don't have the Hard Diaries completed, you can try using Fairy Ring Code BIP to teleport south of the swamp. This will require you to have 50 agility to cross the stepping stones. If you don't have the agility level or Fairy Rings unlocked, you'll have to run from Canifis all the way through the swamp to get here. You can use the shortcut through the Marek hideout if you have completed In Search of the Marek to save some time and then continue south to catch the boat which will take you to Barrows. You can also use the Shades of Morton minigame teleport once every 20 minutes if you have completed the Shades of Morton quest. This will take you straight to the village neighboring Barrows. If you're still running through the swamp, I'd highly recommend you to unlock the minigame teleport so you can get here relatively quickly for about half of the trips. Now let's have a look at the requirements to get started. The only hard requirement is completion of the Priest in Peril quest to enter Mauritania, unless your name is Randy. But to get started, I recommend having an absolute minimum of 43 prayers so you can use all the protection prayers, 50 magic and 50 range or 60-60 attack and strength so you can have a half decent ranged or melee setup for killing Arim. Ideally, you are 75 magic so you can use a trident, but if you're gonna be starting at the lower mage level, you'll wanna have either 55 slayer so you can use a magic dart spell with the slayer staff, or you'll want to have completed the underground pass quest so you can cast Iban's Blast with the Iban's staff. Okay, so those are the minimum requirements I'd say to get started, but if you want to do Barrows somewhat efficiently, you'll really want to have that 75 magic so you can use the Trident of the Seas, 70 prayers so you have more base prayer points making you have to spend less on prayer potions and 75 ranged for the blowpipe or 70 attack and strength so you can use a whip. Before we check out the gear and how to actually do barrows, let's have a look at the brothers. As you know there are 6 of them, 4 hit with melee and there's 1 ranger and 1 major. They all have some unique effects so let's go over them. Darok, probably the most famous brother, hits with melee attacks. His special effect is that he will deal more damage when on low health. His base max hit at full health is a 29, but if he's at 1 HP this increases to a whopping 57, so make sure to always have your protect from melee up here. The next brother in the circle is Guthan. He also uses melee and has a max hit of 24. His special effect is that he has a 25% chance to heal for the full amount of damage he dealt. Luckily, Guthan is not very accurate and will miss most of his attacks if you have some decent armor, so prayer is not necessary here. Then we get to Kirill, the brother who attacks with ranged. His max hit is a bit lower than the other brothers at a max hit of 20, but he hits very rapidly with great accuracy, so I'd highly recommend always using protect from ranged when fighting Kirill. His passive effect is that he has a 25% chance to lower your agility by 20%, which can be quite annoying if you don't use the ornate pool to restore your stats every trip. To the southwest lies Torag. This is probably the least scary brother of all. He only has a max hit of 23 and is quite inaccurate. His special effect is that he will drain your run energy by 20% about a quarter of the times he actually hits you. 
The next brother is Varak. He is quite dangerous because of his special effect. He has a 25% chance to hit you through all your defense bonuses, ignoring your defense level and your protection prayers, so definitely keep your eyes peeled so you don't get comboed by this guy. Having your protect from melee up when killing him, contrary to popular belief, will help a lot because it decreases his max hit by about 50% and for the 75% of times his effect doesn't proc, you also won't get hit. And finally, in the middle is Arim, the Major. This brother is extremely accurate, even when you're wearing Dragonhide armor. He will also drain your stats with spells like Weaken, Curse and Confuse, and he has a 20% chance to proc his special effect, which will lower your strength level by 5 if he lands a hit. It's important to know that these brothers have terrible magic defense bonuses and very low magic levels, so you'll be killing most of them with magic. You also won't need to wear any magic accuracy boosting gear like Mystics because of your crappy stats. Generally, you'll just want to bring the tankiest armor you have. The two exceptions are Kirill and Arim. Kirill has some magic defense bonuses, but still only has a magic level of 1, so he is still quite susceptible to magic attacks. But if you want, you can bring a melee weapon to speed up the kills. Arim has high magic defense and a high magic level, so your magic attacks won't do much here. Ideally, you want to bring some ranged gear to kill him, but you can also melee him if you have a low ranged level. Okay, now that we know what all the boys do, let's have a look at some gear options. I'm gonna start off by showing you the lowest gear I'd recommend starting out with, and showing you what to upgrade and in what order. This is the lowest tier of gear I'd start Barrows with. A set of full rune armor with an amulet of power, a slayer staff to cast magic dart which requires 55 slayer, and a dragon dagger and dragon scimitar switch for Arim. If you have low melee stats, you can bring a switch to blue dragon hide with a magic shortbow and the best arrows you have. The most important thing you want to upgrade next is your magic weapon, since that's what we'll be using most of the time. Consider getting yourself an Iben staff from completing the underground pass quest. Iben's Blast has a base max hit of 25, which is about 9 more than Magic Dart, so that's absolutely massive. Every time you use the Iben's Blast spell, you'll use up a charge of the staff, and it only has 120 charges. So you really want to pay 200k to the Dark Mage at the entrance of the Underground Pass to upgrade it to the Iben Staff U, which will hold 2.5k charges. If you have the Tome of Fire, definitely bring it here as it will give you an infinite amount of free fire runes, but you won't receive the damage bonus and it won't use up any burnt pages. Once you get some more cash to spend, I'd upgrade my magic gear even further as soon as possible. The best gear to invest in would be a Trident of the Seas and an Occult Necklace, which is gonna boost your damage by an insane amount. Your max hit with the Trident of the Seas will be slightly lower than with Iben's Blast, but it hits a lot faster so your DPS will be much higher. You'll also need to have 75 magic to wear the occult, and 75 magic to use the trident. Also try to get your hands on an imbued god cape by completing Mage Arena 2. Once you have a decent magic setup, I'd invest in some more tanky armor, for example dragon or barrows gear. You'll also want to upgrade your melee or range gear. Get yourself a whip if you're gonna be meleeing Arim, but ideally you'll want to get yourself a blowpipe with full black dehyde to make quick work of Arim. After that, I'd upgrade to the Toxic Trident as soon as possible to get about 4 extra max hits. Now we're getting into the realm of maximum efficiency. As soon as you have the Blowpipe and the Toxic Trident, I'd drop the tank armor and melee gear altogether and just go with the ranged gear setup. Bring some blessed dehydes, but definitely keep the magic damage boosting items like the Occult and the Imbued God Cape. You'll also want to look into picking up a Tormented Bracelet for yourself to get even more DPS when maging. If you have enough cash, buy yourself a full set of Ancestral to get more max hits with magic and bring a blessed dehyde switch to kill Arim. If you want to get crazy efficient and the best trip times as possible, get yourself a Sanguinesti staff with max mage, a switch to max melee with d claws to spec out Carol and a switch to full range void to kill off Arim. For the inventory, you'll want to bring your range switch. If you don't have the blowpipe, bring an MSB and a dragon dagger to kill Arim. You want to bring a super combat and or ranging potion, a couple of prayer potions and a few pieces of food. Bring a spade to dig up the graves and your barrows teleports to get here. If you are using a POH to use the ornate pool to restore your stats, bring some house teleports. Otherwise you can also bring a ring of dueling to restore your stats at the pool of refreshment in the Ferox enclave. Once you're ready and you've made it to barrows, walk on top of one of the six hills and dig with your spade to enter a crypt. Each crypt contains a different, unique brother. Search the sarcophagus and usually you'll find a brother. 
just put on your protection prayer and kill him. If you want to, you can also bring some freezing spells like Entangle or Ice Barrage to kill them from afar without taking any damage. Every 15 seconds, one of those heads will pop up and drain your prayer by 8 points plus the amount of brothers you've killed this run. If you have the Barrows Brothers Runelight plugin enabled, you can check this timer in the top left, as well as check what brothers you've already killed, which can be really helpful. I'd recommend standing close to the stairs when killing a brother, so you can get out as soon as you finish the kill, so you might save yourself from getting your prayer drained an additional time. After you kill the brother, just climb the stairs and continue to make your way, killing all the brothers. One of the six sarcophaguses will lead you into a tunnel, which leads to the reward chest. You want to make sure you've killed the other five brothers before entering the tunnel, so just exit out for now and continue making the round. You can ask the strange old man roaming around to change your tunnel warning message into a single line, uh, saving you from clicking spacebar once. Now let's have a look at what the best order to dig up the graves is. If you're maxed out with a high prayer level, you shouldn't have to use any prayer potions to finish off all the brothers, and you should just make a quick circle around. Start off with maging Darok, continue with Guthan, then switch to your melee gear to declaw out Kirill, switch back to your mage gear for Torag and Varak, and finally switch to your ranged gear to kill Aaron. This will be the fastest way because it's pretty much the shortest path to take, and it's nice to heal up the damage you took by tanking Varak by using your blowpipe specs on Arim. But if you're not maxed and your DPS and prayer level are on the lower end, you'll want to get your priorities straight. You really want to use prayer against Darok, Arim and Kirill because those guys will absolutely fuck you up. If you have some very low defense stats and crappy tank armor, I'd recommend just coughing up the prayer potions and making the circle like the max player route, ending on Aram and using protection prayer against all the brothers. But if you have some decent gear, like dragon armor and up, you can probably get away by killing Guthan, Thorag and Varak without prayer. In that case, I'd recommend starting off with Darok, then Aram, then Kirill, by which time you're probably out of prayer points. Then I just kill the remaining three brothers in whichever order you like. When you've killed the five brothers, get back to the sarcophagus covering the tunnel and enter it. You'll be placed in this 3x3 rooms mini maze with a rewards chest in the middle. There are also tunnels connecting the corners of each side with each other. There are sets of two doors between all of the separate rooms and every time you open it, a monster will be summoned to attack you. Occasionally this might also trigger the sixth brother showing up, so keep ready to drink a prayer potion and get your protection prayers up when you're opening doors. The goal is to navigate to the middle reward area, and there's only one door you can open to reach the center. So just keep running around the tunnel, but always have an eye on the center room when running around to find out which door you have to get to. Once you've made it to the door leading to the center area, you'll be given a little puzzle to solve before entering. If you have the Barrows Brothers plugin enabled, the correct answer will be highlighted, so just click the answer and the door will open. If you want, you can also bring the strange old lockpick here. This is a reward from the Hallowed Sepulchre and will make you able to open any doors which normally you wouldn't be able to open. It starts off with 50 charges and every time you open a set of two doors, one charge will be used. Using this will save you an immense amount of time as you sometimes have to run all the way around the tunnels to get to the entrance. If you want to recuperate some of the cash you spent on the lockpick, you can alk it on its last charge to get back 20k. You should only use about 2 charges per barrel's run, and the time saved by using it will pretty much guarantee to make up for the cost of the lockpick, so if you have access to the lockpick, I'd highly recommend using it. You'll also want to kill a couple of monsters in the tunnels to get your reward potential up. I'll talk a bit more about that in the rewards section of this video. When you're ready to open a chest, wait for the prayer drain timer to tick down, drink a prayer potion and open the chest to finish off the final brother. Once you've looted the chest, simply teleport out to your POH or to the Ferox Enclave to restore your stats. If you're still running through the swamp to get here, it's gonna be more time efficient to just run back through the tunnels to get back to the ladder. This is of course gonna waste some more supplies because you'll have to get your stats back up with potions and food. Now let's have a look at the possible rewards you can get from the chest. The main drops you're hunting after are of course the Barrows pieces, which drop at a rate of 1 in 17 if you kill all the brothers. There are 24 uniques to collect and on average it will take you about 1500 chests to obtain all of them because the chance to receive a piece you haven't gotten before gets lower with each unique piece you get. 
The chances of getting just that one unique you're after is around 1 in 349. If you are just hunting after one unique item, you could consider just killing one brother whose item you still need and loot the chest without killing any of the others. A lot of people also come here to collect elite clues to turn them into masters. These drop at the rate of 1 in 33. You can also get bolt racks, half keys and d-meds here, depending on how much reward potential you get. A large bulk of your profits will come from the rune drops, especially the death and blood runes add up to a ton of profit over time. If you want to get the most profit out of your barrows runs, you'll want to have completed the Mauritania hard diary to get 50% more runes from your chests. You don't need to bring the Mauritania legs with you to receive the additional runes. You'll also want to get the correct amount of reward potential percentage. Once you go over 87% potential, you'll start receiving the bolt racks, half keys and D meds, which are generally a lot lower in value than getting more runes. So you should try to aim to get around 86% reward potential for the max amount of runes. I usually get this percentage by killing the 6 brothers, 2 skeletons and 1 crypt rat or a bloodworm. If you want to get faster kills on the skeletons in the tunnels, you could consider bringing a salve amulet to speed up those kills. If you are not interested in blood runes and you only want to focus on getting death runes as your non-unique loot, you should try to aim for a reward potential of around 74%. Now, what are the uses of these rewards? Where are you actually gonna be using your Barrow's gear? Torag is basically the crappiest armor set to use and the weapon is absolute dog shit and the set effect is really trash, so you're only gonna be using it as tanky armor. If you don't have Justicia yet, this is a great replacement at a fraction of the cost. The set effect of the Carol's equipment is also very poor and the weapon isn't all that great. The only two pieces that have great applications are the top and bottom, mainly because these give some crazy amount of magic defense, so very useful when you're killing monsters that will hit you with magic damage. Useful for doing Zami or Bando's Godwars, Corp, Scottizo, Demonic Gorillas and so on. So quite a few applications which is why the top is so valuable. Aram's gear isn't the greatest either, as magic accuracy bonuses are often pretty useless even when using magic, but the top and bottom still hold some great value just because it's pretty much second best in slot after the very expensive ancestral gear. It's nice to have for raids, Zulra, Kraken and so on. Basically wherever you need magic offense bonuses. Varox is pretty useful as a set because of its nice set effect bonus of being able to hit true defense and prayer. The weapon is kind of trash, but just because of the set effect it's still used quite often. It's a popular choice for Iron Man when killing the wilderness bosses Callisto and Venonatus because of the rarity of the wilderness weapons and the Calphite Queen to smash through her protection prayers. Guthan is also widely used because of its set effect, making you able to heal up without having to use food, saving you some trips to the bank. It's commonly used when training Slayer, camping out some gargoyles, but also frequently used when killing the Godwars bosses in group to extend your trips. It's also nice to have for when you're killing Rex for your first Berserk ring if you're a lower level. And you could AFK train with it very well at Bandits, however this isn't commonly done anymore with the addition of the Nightmare Zone to the game, which brings us to the last set, Darox. Darox gear is probably the most popular and has some great uses. Because of the damage increase for every hit point lost, it's great to use in the Nightmare Zone when using Absorption Potions to stay at 1 HP. Using the set is often combined with a Rock Cake or Locator Orb to lower your hit points. It's also very popular in the PvP scene, the good old Venge Darok fights which are crazy fun. It's also very good at Giant Mole because of its high damage per hit, making it burrow less often. It's just a ton of fun to kill whatever with Darox in my opinion, seeing those max hits just gives me a warm fuzzy feeling inside. I used it to kill an insane amount of Tsar creatures back in the day to get those sweet obsidian drops. But that's basically it for my complete guide. If I missed out on any information, let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to a pinned comment. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my future guides. I hope you guys don't mind this being a bit of a longer video, but this was kind of a passion project for me. If you watched the video till the end, let me know what you would like a guide on. And thanks so much for watching. See ya!